Are you sure? Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never ask a bride why she's getting married. Don't wear a skirt on a windy day. Deodorant is not a shower. Don't sniff chili flakes. <laughs> and don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. You might be wondering why it's taken us a couple of days to talk about Pakistan politics and Pakistan elections, one of our favorite subjects. That's because, one, the situation has been fast-moving, and second, the situation has been much too cluttered also for me to hold forth on it. Because a few things were clear that the army in this case had decided who was not going to rule Pakistan. They had also decided who is going to rule Pakistan, but more importantly, they had decided who is not going to rule Pakistan, that is Imran Khan. Now, as results have come in, at least most of the results have come in, some are awaited, a few things have become clear now. And that's the reason we are coming at you with this episode of Kartak Letter and possibly there will be at least one more going ahead as things become clearer, as, as things fall in place. Now, first of all, first of all, it was a rigged election. It was a rigged election in more ways than one and that's not opinion, that is plain fact. The leading party in, the, in Pakistan politics was disqualified from contesting. Its main leader, Imran Khan, that's a party built around one leader, one individual. He's been in jail and convicted at a speed that will, that will actually shame kangaroo courts anywhere. That will also shame the kind of tribunals or courts that we see, see in China sometimes convicting people in no time. No. These convictions have come in as fast a pace at, at as fast a pace as have been the overturning of convictions against Nawaz Sharif. So you know the powers that be, who do they want to rule Pakistan, who do they do not want to rule Pakistan. The elections, the conduct of elections itself, while the party was banned, Imran Khan's party was banned, Pakistan Tariqa Insaf, its symbol was also frozen. That is the bat, the cricket bat or balla, 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 that's been his war cry. That's also been, that's also been frozen. Now in our countries, symbols are very important. In Pakistan, even more important because at li in, in terms of general literacy, Pakistan is still way poorer. Pakistan is way poorer than say India. Even in India, parties fight for their symbols. We just saw the old NCP, Sharad Pawar's party, and the new NCP, Ajit Pawar's party, his nephew's party, fighting over their clock symbol. Because symbols are important even in India. You can see that they are much more important in Pakistan. Now, the party is not there. The leader is not there. The symbol is not there. So what did PTI do? Imran Khan and PTI decided not to give up the fight. They fielded independent candidates, candidates as independents, but affiliated to their party, there is no secret about who they are affiliated for and they can contest an under multiple symbols. It looks like those candidates have got the largest number of seats. That in spite of the fact that the next level of rigging also took place. We've seen videos coming out of Pakistan, social media is full of information from the ground in Pakistan. There's been violence, there have been army soldiers moving into counting centers and there's been mass large-scale rigging. It's not new in Pakistan. It's happened many times, many times before. Last few elections, however, in Pakistan were reasonably clean. Manipulation was done after the elections. This time, even, even the counting level, booth level rigging has been done. In spite of that, while Candidates loyal to Imran Khan and PTI, independent candidates, they haven't got majority, they haven't come anywhere close to majority. They are still the highest number of seats in the Pakistan National Assembly. At last count, with 251 results announced out of 266, we need to understand Pakistan's, Pakistan's National Assembly co composition. 266 seats out of a house of 336 go to the polls. What happens to the remaining 70? 
remaining 70 are reserved seats of which 60 are reserved for women and 10 are reserved for minorities, Hindus, Sikhs, Christians. What happens with those seats? It all depends on who wins the 266 seats because those 70 seats then for women and, 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 and minorities, those are then allocated to parties on the basis of the strength that they have won out of these 266. So they can then, these, they can then allocate these seats to their candidates. So 266 is what the fight is about. The remaining 70 are then distributed proportionately. For example, if somebody gets half the seats in 266, they will also get half the seats, say 30 seats of the, of the women's constituencies reserved for women and five reserved for minorities. That's how it works. So the fight is about 266. Now 266 directly elected seats, 70 reserved, 60 for women, 10 for minorities. How will those be allocated? I told you those will be allocated proportionate to the numbers that each party has received in in the two, in the election for 266 so if somebody gets 50% of these seats you that party will also get 50% of the women seats and the minority seats now remember in this case the important thing is that Imran Khan's independents may have got the largest number of seats in the direct election but they are not a party because they are not a party, they are not entitled to any of these reserved seats. So these reserved seats will then be divided among PML Nawaz, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, Pakistan People's Party and then again couple of the other smaller parties. Another important highlight in this election is that the party of the Islamists, that is the Jamiat Ulema Islam, that is Maulana Faslur Rahman's party, that has done very badly. At last count when I saw, they had won only two seats out of 251, maybe two or three like that. So once again, that reminds us that while there is deep and wide Islamization of Pakistan society, Islamic political parties are not particularly favored by Pakistan's voters. You find it contradictory, you can put it away in that big, heavy bag of contradictions in Pakistani society in politics. Of this 266, 251 results were announced till we last saw them by Pakistan Election Commission of Pakistan, of which 91 were with independents who were generally seen to be loyal to PTI or who are seen to be PTI proxies. I don't use proxy in a judgmental sense here because PTI in this case is an underdog. We've been very critical of Imran Khan. We've also made fun of him in the past. But the fact is that today in this election, he's the underdog and he's also emerged the most popular of the Pakistani leaders who is being denied power and who will be denied power. In fact, it's unlikely at this point, unless there are massive street level protests and things go completely out of control or, or the equivalent of an Arab Spring takes place in Pakistan, which is which is, which is very challenging given the fact that Pakistani army is so powerful. Unless something like that happens, you, we don't see Imran Khan coming out of jail right now. So in this case, we can also say two things. And two things you might say, I'm contradicting myself, but this is not a contradiction. That the Pakistani army has lost this election. Because Pakistani army, that's, that verdict is clear. Pakistani army sent Imran Khan to jail. The first, they got rid of him as prime minister. They manipulated things so he would lose power. Second, they brought back Nawaz Sharif as their candidate, who they had turned out in 2018. They brought him back. They brought him back as their candidate to lead his party to a majority. Then they put Imran Khan in jail, had him quickly convicted. They banned his party. They put lots of key leaders of his party in jail. They took away his election symbol and they thought they had all everything set up. Then they manipulated election results as well. In spite of that, their candidate has not won. Now, so as I said, one side of the coin is that the Pakistani army has lost this election. This is a first in Pakistan's history. 
This is the first in Pakistan history, Pakistan's history in the sense that the army got so frontally involved in an electoral process and its horse lost the race. That has not happened in Pakistan. So that is the first straightforward popular rejection of the Pakistani army. So the slogan that's been going on for some time, and this was repeated by Imran Khan's people a lot during the protests after his initial arrest, ये जो दहशत गर्दी है उसके पीछे वर्दी है दैट मीन्स इफ यू सी ऑल दिस टेररिज्म एंड इंस्टेबिलिटी इन पाकिस्तान द फोर्स बिहाइंड दिस इज द यूनिफॉर्म राइट सो एट ए पॉपुलर लेवल ए डिसफेक्शन विद पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तानी आर्मी इज ए न्यू फिनोम इन पाकिस्तान दैट सेड द अदर साइड ऑफ द कॉइन इज द पाकिस्तानी आर्मी हैज वन पाकिस्तानी आर्मी हैज वन इन द सेंस दैट द लीडर हु दे डिड नॉट वॉन्ट इन पावर whose continuation in power they had got impatient with that's Imran Khan although he was their protege in 2018 they had again manipulated the political process to ensure Nawaz Sharif's defeat first they got Nawaz Sharif out of power by having this trumped up court verdicts against him saying that because he is not he was not convicted for a corruption charge no money was found on him but just to say that he is not sadik and amin he is not truthful and trustworthy now those are things in pakistan's constitution and once again it's a reminder that when you bring in scriptures and religion in your constitution in a democracy you are you are walking on a very slippery slope because this can be used by anybody because scriptures and religion any religion any scriptures have no place in the constitution of a modern democracy the pakistanis chose to do it that was used by the army to first get nawaz sharif out then they helped imran khan in his election and he was also helped by the fact that nawaz sharif wasn't there as the force that he is even then when nawaz when imran khan failed to get his majority army manipulated things to get him a majority then they fell out with him because imran khan started thinking i am a real leader and he also islamized his politics much too much islamized it to the extent that he began fighting with the americans with the western world reaching out to to russia exactly almost exactly at the time when putin had invaded ukraine so he messed up all of pakistani army's world view and also challenged their control over foreign and strategic policy even more importantly he started messing with the pakistani army's key appointments he got general asim munir the current chief removed removed remove means not given an extension as isi chief he brought in lieutenant general faiz hamid as his own isi chief remember him he's the one who led it up in in, in kabul immediately as the, the taliban won control of kabul and he is the one who posed with those pictures holding his cup of tea and 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 the saucer he wanted imran khan wanted him to move up whereas general bajwa at that point wanted his candidate to become the isi chief now that was a tussle that went on for some time and even then we had actually featured this in a whole episode of karta clutter i will share a link with you to say that this is not going to work also it was the first time a serving elected pakistani prime minister had so openly challenged the army and as you would expect he did not win the last time and he is not winning this time also the pakistani army now had decided that no matter what happens imran khan is not coming to power and they will put up some kind of a some kind of a government in place some kind of a government because now you have a situation where out of 251 pti has 91 pakistan muslim league that is nawaz sharif's party has 71 14 results are still to be counted so maybe maybe the gap will not be 20 the gap will be maybe 15 or 16 towards the end and these independents because they are unconnected unaffiliated right now formally some of them can be quote and quote won over so to that extent because pakistani army will still be able to install a government of the kind that it wants one it will be able to keep imran khan out second install a government of the kind that it wants we would also say that the pakistani army has won so the pakistani army has lost out big time politically morally 
and also institutionally at the same time in the narrow sense of the tactical battle in the elections and for installing a government that it suits it or that it, that it wants in power, it has won that battle. So lost the war, but won a battle. So I see a lot coming up on Pakistani social media and I will try and see if we can find some for you. But the one that really caught my eye is, is something that obviously PTI supporters are putting out, Imran Khan supporters are put, putting out. That says Pakistan's, the great Pakistani army, it has never won a war, but it has never lost an election, right? You said that in this case, however, the Pakistani army has lost this election. It is just that when you are the first empire, the second empire, the third empire, the fourth empire, and you control the DRS as well, it's in this situation using those powers that they have still been able to wrest this election to install their own favored government. I won't say favorite, their own favored government in power. And the only thing we can say at this point is that this arrangement will not last long. Maybe in a couple of years from now, maybe a couple of years, three years, we see either one more election in Pakistan or another army intervention. So this, this story is by no means over yet. This election has been criticized by almost all the democratic nations in the world, the US, UK, EU, Australia, all of these are countries which have been friendly with Pakistan, not just with the history of Afghanistan, but a country like UK, the US since the mid 50s, UK from 1947 onwards has been widely sympathetic and friendly with Pakistan. Great Britain, in fact, even on Kashmir has had a most partisan pro-Pakistani position since 1947. All of these countries have now issued statements criticizing this Pakistani election and calling it unfair. So I will bring you some observations from Dawn. Dawn is Pakistan's most respected newspaper. It's also a newspaper that's been very critical of Imran Khan, his politics and also his style of governance as prime minister. Like a lot of the other Pakistani media, Imran Khan had not been kind to Pakistani media. It had attacked journalists, media, everybody. And in fact, like in following the pattern of strongman leaders around the world, he had developed the idea and actually quite perfected the idea that he did not need mainstream media. So he, he created his own sort of local political superpower with his social media. It is the same social media superpower for him, which has campaigned in this election and actually has got his independence. First of all, spread the message that these are his independence, these are from his party and handed out such an embarrassment for the army and the establishment. Now, that Imran Khan, which Don and other mainstream Pakistani media had not just been critical of, or critical of but at whose hands they had all suffered in various different ways. That Dawn is now writing, and I quote from Dawn's editorial, it says, number one, that the good thing about this election is the, the public faith in Pakistan's democratic political system endures, and also these elections show that if threatened, people will jealously protect their right to self-governance. Now, where is this coming from? This is, this is coming from most importantly, from the turnout percentages. Election turnout percentages in Pakistan have been very poor. They've been very poor. In last two elections, they've averaged 52%. That is, in one election, 51%, in one, 53%. But if you go back, 51, 52 uh, is also bad, quite bad, particularly in, a, in populous countries like ours which are also so politicized, people are so interested in politics, people are usually not indifferent to politics in our countries and that's why you get high turnouts. In Pakistan, no, that's not the case because people don't quite trust the system of elections yet. If you go further back, see the voting percentages in previous elections. If you see the past four elections, 2018, I told you 51%, 2013, 55%, that's why the average of 52. 2008, 44%, 2002, 41%. So very few Pakistanis have been coming out to vote. 
on the other hand this time in this election although the party that looks like was the favorite party of the largest number of voters that was kept out that leader was kept in jail more than 70% people have come out to vote all the data has not come out as yet but estimates now say that almost 70% people if not more have come out to vote and that is what has propelled these imran khan independents so that is why don says that these elections have reaffirmed public faith in pakistan's democratic political system it endures and also that if threatened people will jealously protect their right to self governance the next point important point that powers that be should drop their vendetta against pti forthwith this is don coming to the defense of pti leave independents free so let these independents choose which party they want to go to because this is 90 plus independents at last count the largest number now because they are independents they can go anywhere right so they can be quote and quote persuaded to go anywhere so the same rbi and the same establishment had quote and quote persuaded enough people like these in 2018 to give imran khan a majority that did not have remember this is not the first election in pakistan to be rigged almost every election in pakistan has been rigged in some ways and that's why that's why the surprise level is a bit less and that's why you might see a government come into being as a result from this as a result of this and things settle down the only difference being this time that imran khan has street support that said i bring you to the third point in this dawn editorial it says whoever whoever can form a coalition now over the next week or so negotiations will go on so whoever can form a coalition should be allowed to form a coalition coalition the establishment and the army should not intervene in this as they did in 2018 i would say that this is a hope this is a hope this is much too optimistic it's there is no there is no such expectation that this will not happen in fact you will be quite sure you can be quite sure that this, that this is exactly what will happen the establishment will decide what kind of a combination comes in and we will discuss i will talk for, for a minute in conclusion about what possible combinations are possible and next point that don makes is and that's a very important point and it's a principled point and they say that the state must realize that sometimes a vote for the underdog is a vote against the establishment which is what has happened in this case because enough people in pakistan particularly younger people have rebelled against what they see as this draconian power and excesses of the establishment or the military plus the establishment pakistan has a very young very young electorate how young i will tell you so number of people in the age group of 18 to 35 who are voting in this election is almost 50% it was 47% a couple of years back but you know given high birth rates in pakistan and how pakistan is seeing this young population bulge it will be close to 50% 47 50 uh, doesn't make that much difference but it 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 is that much other important thing is the first time voters if you look at the first time voters this time voters who turned 18 since the last election in 2018 that is 18% almost one in five pakistani voters is a first time voter they have very little idea of pakistan's political history or what what's happened in the past for them imran khan was the first leader who they saw speaking out to them speaking out to them in a manner that wowed them that impressed them and they are the ones who are making a big difference this time in fact if i pick up data from gallup pakistan it tells us that until that until 2018 since 1988 that is the first election that took place after zia ul haq's death or assassination whatever you choose to call it in night since 1988 less than 25% of these young voters have voted in pakistan this time if the overall percentage is 70% in any case you can presume that a lot more have come out and you can also at the same time make a presumption that a lot more of them have voted for 